Hey, hey, everybody, it's me, Jonathan Miller, the voice of the veil. Welcome back to another big hype podcast. And today, very special guest, I'm joined by Sonny Hardy. Sonny, how you doing? Not too bad, thank you, mate. How are you? It's not quite as good as my introductions when you're in the ring, but <laughs> it'll have to do. The- <laughs> I'm doing very well. Thank you so much for asking. Thank you so much for agreeing to come onto the podcast. I really appreciate it. No, thank you for having me. Good stuff. So obviously, we the podcast is kind of based around you and, and hyping you up as much as possible. But I think people like to know a little bit about the boxers, how they got to where they are today, or how they come in contact with them through my podcast. Um, so I want to take you right back to when you first started and how you got into boxing. How, how did it? You were born. Let's go from there. Yeah. So uh, I started boxing when I was eight years old. There was no real story or reason for why I got into it. I was always quite an athletic kid, but I never found a sport that I was particularly great at. I tried football, didn't work out. Uh, I used to do swimming and uh, I, I done karate, which is my first combat sport. And that I took a bit of an interest in, but I got to a stage where I wasn't progressing anymore. I kind of reached my limit and, and there wasn't enough contact in there for my liking. So my dad introduced me um, to the amateur gym. Um, I went there, got punched in the face and fell in love with it. <laughs> so how old were you roughly when you when you went to that first gym? Uh, I was eight years old when I went to my first amateur gym. Okay, cool. Um, and who was who, who was sort of around you at the time then, sort of you were sort of looking up to, inspirational? Was there people in the gym that, you, or that now we would know as... So, you know, uh, champions, et cetera, professionals, uh, what was Um, around you at the time? So it's only a very, it's a small underground club that we come from. It's not, it's not a massive name, but it's, it's one of them sort of clubs. We're on the amateur scene. If you hear you've got a fight with one of our lads, you know, it's going to be a decent fight. But um, we never, we never had many national champions. We never had many people turn professional. We had a couple. We had Billy Wooders, Lee Martin, Mm. and, um, there was nobody in particular that I was really looking up to when I first got introduced to boxing. I never really watched the sport, but as time went on, I used to watch all the old school fighters. And um, mm. to to this day, my, my favourite fighter who I aspire to be the most, or to aspire to be as technically gifted as, is uh, Vasily Lomachenko. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you draw you draw from that inspiration as well why, why was the gym so notable no, you know, um, notorious I say that, that's perhaps not the right word but why was it so respected obviously in the amateur circles what was the what was the coaching like was the so um the, the coaches there uh, we had Char- charlie blake we we know we know him as baldy that's how all everyone calls him but um we was never each boxer was introduced as their own individual style Whereas you do get some amateur clubs where every boxer's, um, they're, they're all fighting to a certain blueprint. There's a certain style in each club. Our club's not like that. So if, if you can box, we'll teach you to box. If you're not too okay. great technically, we'll make sure you're fit enough so that you can throw punches for three rounds. And that was what I was like to start with. I was never a great technical boxer, but I, I won a lot of fights solely out of the fact that I had a good engine. I was trained to to a um, notable intensity to the stage where I was fit enough to do that for three rounds. Okay. Okay. So going, so yeah, going through, going the three rounds, the distance, obviously it's different at the amateur level to the pro level as we will come to in a minute, but, um, and, and other guests have alluded to this. How did you, how did you find the change then from the, the, the amateur game to the pro game? It, it was much different. I always thought I was a hard work and amateur fighter in the end. I, I won a national title. Uh, I won the British title in the amateurs as a senior just before I turned professional. And I was only, yeah. I was going for, I was training twice a week and running three times a week. And that, and that was my weekly routine. And I thought I was really putting the effort in. Now I'm, I've turned professional and it's gone straight into twice a day, six days a week. And the intensity is remarkably different. But um, I'm really enjoying the process. I'm enjoying the transition between an amateur room and a professional. Obviously, in my eyes, I'm still on the first step of the ladder. I'm progressing. I'm, I'm slowly but surely progressing. And um, I'm getting to where I want to be. Yeah, because it's, it's only been, what, just nearly a year since your debut in the professional ranks. 
Yeah, yeah. My my debut was July the fifteenth, twenty twenty three. I was there. Was I? Right. <laughs> I think yeah, I yeah, was. Yeah. I'm sure I you I was. was. I was saying. I'm sure earlier, I was. Yeah. I'm sure I was actually. Um, and it was yeah, it was your call, wasn't it? That's the one. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's obviously been an instrumental in in the last year of your career, how you've progressed. We're still undefeated. We've gone through what still five, six, yeah. seven, seven, nearly about six, six. Okay, six. Um, <laughs> I, I, I had six in my head, but I'm like trying to sort of judge the fact that when this podcast comes out, you might have had another one. <laughs> I'm sure you'll still be undefeated in that. So absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah. So how, how have you? How have you? Well, obviously, you alluded to it already. The change in in your performance, you're changing your. Uh, your lifestyle to fit professional boxing in how does that how are you finding that change then now obviously on the body and uh you know in your routine as well yeah um it's a, it's a lot more uh taxing on your body you you're training very intensely every single session works out 12 times a week it's a lot of training some of the sessions are up to two maybe two and a half hours long and um it is, it's physically and mentally exhausting. Sometimes you want to get home and um, sometimes I've just got to sit myself in a room for an hour and just, just chill out, talk to nobody and, and just sit there with my own thoughts. But at the same time, I, I disagree with a lot of the boxers who, who claim that they sacrifice a lot for the sport. I don't believe truly that I've made any real sacrifices. I've lost that in a little bit of social aspect with friends and family and stuff, but I, I love the sport so much that I wouldn't classify that as a, as a sacrifice, but, um, yeah. Yeah. And a lot of men get to a certain age, then there's, uh, influences from outside. Uh, there's influences to go out with their friends. There's influences to go out with their girls, uh, or, or yeah. boys in this case. Um, you know, and, and, and how that obviously affects people and how that sort of changes how their mindset switches, I suppose, is that is, is that sort of you've been able to stay clean and thought on what you want to achieve. So what is it that you want to achieve within boxing? Uh, I think every boxer's end goal should be a world title or a belt around their waist. If they're not, they're in the wrong sport. But um, yeah, that's my overall goal, uh, to fight for and become a world champion. That's that's my ambition and that's that's where I'm hoping to get to. So the vision's clear. You know exactly what you want to go, where you want to go, and and how you're getting there is is slowly but surely work, working for you. The plan is... So, because how old... You're not that old, though, are you? You're, what are you, 20? 21. Uh, yeah, twenty. I was going to say twenty-one in my paper because I had paper at twenty-one written down, but I was like, okay. So, at what? How? At what sort of? Uh, it's hard to hard to judge this, isn't it? You don't know what's ahead of you, but at the same time, when would you like to have been in the mix for world championships? When would you like to be in the mix for, uh, you know, for the British uh, and and the Europeans and Commonwealths and all those sort of other things? Is there a? Have you got a sort of idea? I want to get to that belt first, and then that belt, and then the world yeah so i i definitely like to um go through the, the traditional route i find it a lot more rewarding <laughs> no 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 you could just go no I, I i like it i enjoy this um so I, i'd like to box for the southern area english british and then progress from there that's the sort of route that i, uh, route that I want to go to add the commonwealth title onto that i want to i want to win every domestic level title before i progress into the internationals europeans and, and then eventually the world titles but um, I, I have it. Yeah, so that's I, how, I know yeah, that good. by next year I'll be ready to compete for that sort of title. Yeah. Is there is there um is there is there like for for us as M, as as MC sometimes we mm. say we've got um iconic places mm. that we want to work. Your call is one of the ones for many British British MCs, and I'm sure it's the same for many British boxers that they want to box at the York Hall. Your debut was there. You've boxed there several times since that as well. Uh, is there other places that around the world that you'd like to actually, I wouldn't mind fighting in that town or that city based on the people that you've, you, 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 you yeah. aspire to and follow through their careers? Yeah, absolutely. I'd, I'd love to. I'd love to fight at Madison Square Garden, fight at Wembley, but um, 
I think one of my biggest achievements in the sport will be to sell out um, the Olympic Stadium, the, the London Stadium. Any particular reason why that stadium? <laughs> uh, West Ham fan. West Ham fan. No, never. No. Dang it, all these Absolutely. Lovely, sir, West Ham fans. Damn. And here's me, a Spurs <laughs> fan, sitting here we're talking to a like, <laughs> No, it's all good, mate. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> no, mate, I, 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 I can understand that one. It's kind of like Ellen Road for uh, Josh. Uh, uh, Josh bleh, surname's gone, but you know what I mean. Um, uh, Leeds fan. Leeds for he was he was happy then when they put the fights on at Ellen Road for him. Yeah. that was a great night. Um, you know, and again, I can see that would make a great homecoming for you. Would that be? Would you rather that sort of be for a world champion or, or the defence of a world championship? Um, if you had the preference, I think that I'd like that to be for the world title. I think that would be a lot more unlikely. Obviously, you'd have, it would be hard to get a champion to fight you in your own backyard. But um, I, th I think that would be a lot more meaningful. For instance, my my trainer, a manager, Kevin Mitchell, he sold out the Upton Park Stadium. And uh, mm -hmm. I'd like to do it on the new stadium. I think you could do it. I I hundred percent believe that you can do it. Um, and yeah, you know, that that I look forward to being. Hopefully, I get the book in. Uh, <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. But no, there are there are lots of others. There are lots of other stadiums out there as well. Cardiff being a, you know again being a Welshman as well. Um, I, you know, I've watched. I watched Posh, um, yeah. Posh, <laughs> Joshua and Parker uh, at the Millennium uh, Stadium. Um, that Cardiff would love a great show. I think you know we do quite well with that. We'd love to have a you know yourself down for something like that. With those sort of stadium sort of things, is that sort of where you'd like to position yourself with some other promotion, perhaps at, at the time closer to it when it gets to that level? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. So. Um... Uh, whatever whatever promoter gives me the best offer, and um, whatever promoter gives me the most likelihood of that happening, I'll take. Good, yeah, no, it's 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 yeah, it's definitely the business side of it of the sport is not is is difficult. And we you know, some of the other uh, podcasts that I've done as well with other people, they talk about the business side of it, and and yeah, yeah. business as long as business can be done and good business is good for all parties involved, then then there's yeah definitely talks that can happen and, and uh, we've always seen you know we've seen so many uh, people talking about big fights AJ and Fury is probably the one that a lot of fans will know because it's been on it's been off but the money and the fights and the talk and it's all yeah we understandably we all want to see the fight they wanted to see the fight but obviously it's got to be right on all parts and that's part of the business of of, uh, of the sport I suppose as well so but going back to how you train um, is there something, or maybe not so much training, but on a fight day, um, is there a routine or a ritual that you have that you you have to do, or a lucky pair, a lucky pair of pants, or something that you have to have with you uh, before you get into the ring? Is there something like that? Uh, not particularly. My, my my typical routine the night before the fight, I usually go to the cinema, uh, watch a movie. I wake up okay. and. Uh, so far, the routine has been I've been fighting at lightweight and um, I, I've been deliberately getting myself maybe 0.8 under the weight on the day when it's the same day weighing. So even before the weighing, I'll go to the calf and I'll be, I'll be refueling from the morning, whereas my opponent will be refueling after the weighing sort of thing. So for you, so all right, okay. So that that's that's yeah, that's a different technique to a lot of them. Like you say, a lot of them just go off. They have their Nando's or chicken food, whatever shop they go to. Obviously, other brands available, um, and that that probably puts them a little bit of a. Do, have you tried doing that yourself? Do you find it was lethargic then when you're in the ring later in the evening or? Uh, strangely enough, no. I've I've just. As an amateur, for the last five years of my amateur career, I boxed at uh, super lightweight, so 63.5. And uh, okay. I always really struggled getting down to the weight. I never really had the knowledge about nutrition and diet and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I always used to make myself very lethargic just getting down to that for a same day weighing. Now as a professional, I'm fighting at 61.2, 130, uh, 135. Um, yeah. And I seem to be making it really, really easily. I I'd be lying if I said I've ever struggled with the weight. 
Yeah. Oh, that's that is good here because you do hear of so many boxers who struggle to make weight. You know, coming, uh, yeah. you know, coming come over. Uh, mm. You know, and and then they they have to try and do something. Probably not the most healthiest options either. Um, dehydration is not you know is something that some boxers take part in. Not something you know. Again, I know an awful lot about, it and I'm not going to go start talking about it because I don't know an awful lot about it. Mm. But yeah, that that's that's interesting to see. I, I think that's more interesting for me as, as a fan of the sport to know that obviously that's you have a different routine, a different way of processing, and and that's that's you know again interesting. Um, so you don't have any rituals before you get in the in the ring, before you get in, have that fight, before you you. There's nothing like extra that comes into into it. Not really. I, I've never been one of them to uh to believe in manifestation and things like that. I. I just make sure that I've worked hard enough so that I know what, that there's only one possible outcome at the end of the fight. So I go in there with confidence. I'm always relaxed. And uh, we go into the changing room, slap on a bit of Frank Sinatra or something like that and chill out for a little bit. <laughs> uh, there you go. That, that, yeah, you hear your fist. We slap on a bit of Frank Sinatra. <laughs> I, I, that's, that's, that's great. That's great. I, I wish I could do that before some shows now thinking about it. Um, <laughs> Good, man. Good. Good stuff. So boxing, obviously, we talked about where you where you'd like to go. Obviously, we've got some you've got some other things coming up as well. When the podcast will drop, hopefully, people will know uh, that that will be out, and uh, that's that's taking you further afield than that out to the UK and, and further afield. How does how does it feel to be to be sort of noted for that, uh, selected for that process? That you know, it's a it's a big thing that's going to be happening for you. Just tell us about it. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's a massive, massive, this early, it's a career changing opportunity, really. And uh, I'm really grateful to be a part of it. And it's, and being chosen for this um, has really given me an insight to how much I've progressed already in my, in only, what's only been my first year as a professional. And um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. The camp that I'm in now, I'm, I've already started, we're doing a 10 week camp for this. Already the intensity is double compared to the other fights. And um I'll be fighting my first unbeaten opponent, which I'm looking forward to. You don't get many fighters taking this sort of step up at this early on in this career. And um, that's something I'm looking forward to doing and looking forward to progressing on even further afterwards. Yeah, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm excited for that. And uh, I was excited when I saw the opportunities, the the people that are actually getting them, uh, and the nods from the, the, the obviously the the promotion side of it, of it as well as the the coaching and the matchmaking side of it will seem, you know, to put the faith and trust in you in in, in delivering uh, at that level. So yeah. I, I wish you every success with that, and I, I hope that that's just a stepping stone towards the the end goal for you. And I hope that you know that 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 you know, really does bring notoriety to you a bit more as well. So, because you, you, from when I watch you and when I've watched you boxing, because I sit ringside, uh, I, I'm always taken back by your fights. I always take pay attention in your fights as well. <laughs> Sometimes you get distracted by trying to not be distracted by other people asking questions or, you know, what fights next, et cetera, and all that sort of stuff. Um, and I could, I honestly, because I enjoy watching you box as well, because it's, 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 it's good. It's a, it, you're, you're, um, you know, you're you're impactful as well with regards to what you do, and you're, you're thoughtful in what you do. And I like to see that in the in the movements, and uh, kind of praise you on that because it's actually something. You know, some fights you can know which way they're going to go before the end of yeah. before the end of the first round. Um, I think you you always try and bring a try something, or uh, I could see you sort of trying sort of different things. I don't know if that's something that your corner is telling you to try to, to do something like this or do something like that. How, how is how is your you know how is how is you know, that that affecting you in the ring itself in on the night? Do they do the corner tell you what to do? Do you sort of try new things? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the first couple of fights that I had in the corner, where I was very naive and new to the sport, I, I just used to get very excited and. What they were telling me in the corner was going in through one ear and straight out the other. And I was going out, I was stiff legged, just, just going wild. But now uh, I'm really starting to settle down. We, we even go through little bits and pieces that we'll be working on in the changing room before the fight, just breaking everything down individually, step by step. And then um, in the corner, in between rounds, Kevin's given me the advice needed. And um, yeah, it can be, he doesn't bombard me with information. He'll give me one or maybe two things to work on. And one of them ideas might just be to slow it down a little bit and just start picking your opportunities a little bit more. And um, yeah, I've really started taking insight and um, and listening to what he's saying. And 
it's it's been working. It's been working. And is he is he like that in the gym with you as well when you're doing when you're going through the the the, the rounds when you're doing the sparring? Yeah, hundred percent. So um, we usually learn maybe three or four, nothing new during camp, but um, we pick up on little faults and flaws that I'm making in each fight or when I'm doing pads and things like that. And we'll just work on that individually. We won't focus solely on that. We'll try to incorporate it into training in general. So that that way, rather than just focusing on one thing and neglecting everything else, we just yeah. add it into the toolbox and it becomes muscle memory. And um, and it's really, really been working out. So since my debut, I started relaxing a lot more. I started sitting down on my shots. My power has increased. My stamina has increased. And um, yeah, I, I, can't, I can't fault it. Yeah, I've got to say, yeah, I agree with you on that, on those things. Yeah, I have noticed you slow down, sink into it, and yeah, the, the power shots are coming through now, nice and. Uh, was it a body shot in the last one that stopped? Stopped him? Was that was no? The really. Last one or was the one before? Um, all, all of them have been to headshots, but it's definitely been body oh, shots sorry. that have been affecting. So yeah. uh, my last fight, I, I put my opponent down five times in the second round before before he got called off. So it was a That's jab that initially thing. put him down. Yeah. There you go. Well, there we go. But so that's obviously we know we want to go in boxing. We seem to have a nice clear division, clear path for that as well, and where we want to take take it going forward. Um, I know a lot of boxers don't really want to think much further than that, and at the moment that's the that's the drive. But I, I do like to ask as well. What sort of have you got anything sort of things that you'd like to accomplish? Perhaps when the career is is done and the 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 belts are in the cupboard, uh, looking at you shining lights and you know, on the evenings. Is there something you like to do after after boxing? Is there something you like to? In, I don't know. So far, it's a yes. So um, before I started my pro career, I had an injury as an amateur, and um, I had my hand in a cast. So I was out for nine months, and um, I had it in my head that I was going to quit boxing. So I started going on to university, studying physiotherapy, and um, I ended up cutting my hand out of the cast, giving it one last go, winning the title in the amateurs, and then turning over. But um, I've always said, whether it will change in the future, I don't know. But I've always said, even at the age of 31, 32, when I retire from boxing, I'll, I'd always like to go back to that educational side of things and, and gain that extra bit of knowledge, become yeah. a physiotherapist and stuff like that. I'll take my hat off to you if, you, if that's what you, if that's what will happen because it in the sport as well. I don't again. I we don't hear an awful lot about physio. We hear a lot of it in football and rugby and other sports. We don't hear too much about it in boxing per se. So with the knowledge, obviously, you'd have acquired over those years of uh, boxing, perhaps uh, your own your own clinic in that respect, and having your own franchise, perhaps or business working with boxers. Yeah, of course. So. Obviously, in regards to longevity, I'd like to become a boxing coach myself. I'd like to give back whatever knowledge or experience that I've obtained through my career and, and pass it on to somebody who wants to maybe follow in my footsteps or, or create create their own sort of path. And that's what I want to do. And obviously, having that little bit of knowledge as potentially a physiotherapist will help me just, just give them that little bit of an addition to their camp and things like that. I suppose having that bit of knowledge now as well, if you if you took it on board now as well, you'd be able to, as you said, take the help yourself, get healthier, get those around you healthier as well, so they can follow follow you through. I guess is, is would that be something you might consider, sort of, you know, even if it's not quite going the way it wants, perhaps you're bringing that forward a little bit and just starting the knowledge game of it. I guess you're constantly learning anyway in in life anyway, so it's. Yeah, of course. I've I've always been interested in biology. I've always been very fascinated by the human body and things like that. Um, I've done a, a a level three personal training course in college, and um, I smashed my biology exams in school. It's the only subject that I really took pride in doing. And uh, even now, I I like to sit there and do my little bits of research and things like that, just for not just for my own benefit, but but for anyone around me, sort of thing. That's good. That's good. That's good. Because obviously, like you say, you know, you, you're in a you're in camp situation. You know your own body better than anyone else. So you're listening to your body, and I suppose having that knowledge around you as well will help you if you do go down that path of becoming a coach afterwards as well. To be able to sort of say, well, look, I know what it's like. I kind of know what you're going through, but obviously, if we do this, do that, and other things like that, then perhaps you know you can actually help people 
keep their career rather avoid injury because injuries happen in our game you know you you, you said about you changing intensity and other boxers have mentioned it in the podcast as well um and how to avoid injuries as much as possible mm. by doing certain things and trying to avoid um uh, trying to avoid certain certain things as well from training in in training as well um i guess I, again that's my guess on it does that sound fair yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. It's um, yeah. It, I think just taking pride in your body and things like that. Your body's a temple, and and your hands are your work tools at the end of the day in the sport. And um, it, it's not just all about recovery as such. It's more about prevention as well, stopping that possibility of an injury. Making sure if you're feeling a little bit tight before a session, make make sure that you're getting it sorted afterwards, just to prevent any further injury. So, yeah, I, I always say prevention is better than cure, sort of thing. Good, good. Well, I, I wish you every success in your career. There's one, there's one, a couple of other things I wanted to ask you. And the one question I've been dying to ask you for that podcast is behind you, obviously, your gloves. I can only see five sets, though. Am I missing one? Uh, I think we're missing quite a few. These ones <laughs> uh, were were made for my kit for the last fight, but didn't end up get, being used, unfortunately. Um, oh. We've got the claret and blues here. We've got the we've got the West Ham gloves. <laughs> <laughs> um, these are just my sparring gloves. I haven't fought in these. I've got more hanging up here. Um, I've I've got gloves everywhere around the house. I've probably got about fifteen pairs, maybe. Hey, they're like shoes, yeah. But <laughs> so which one's your favourite? They are, they which are like shoes. They're better you? than shoes. <laughs> is there is there a favorite that you've got on there on the on there though you know you, these are the ones that you would happily box every day every night every week and in your comfy shoes oh, i think you, you know, know what the answer is going to be you're not going to be too happy with it <laughs> I, I'm, I'm i'm happy mate i'm happy i i'm not that type of person <laughs> who to hold football things and that football is football and yeah, so we, <laughs> and we all get on the yeah, most yeah. important thing and boxes boxes so it's all getting on uh mate there's a couple of quick just a little thing we do at the end of every podcast it's just a very short uh either or sort of questions um just to sort of get sort of uh, a little bit more knowledge out of you um so if, the yep. fans can find out a little bit more about you. So uh, I'll just start with this one. Southpaw or orthodox? Orthodox. Body shots or headshots? Body shots. Train alone or with a partner? <laughs> That's a hard one. It, I, think it, I think it really, really depends on the training. I, I like training alone, but... Um, there's some sort of sessions. I like sprint sessions and things like that to be with a partner. Okay. Early bird night or uh, night owl. Both. <laughs> you don't get a chance. It's, it's both. <laughs> uh, heavy bag or speed bag. <laughs> heavy bag. Underdog or favorite. favorite uh in the gym or out on the hills in the gym in the gym uh short and powerful punches or long and technical short and powerful short and powerful yeah uh, um <laughs> fight dirty or clean I'm going to have to say fight clean. You've been in, you've been in the ring, you've, yeah. You, <laughs> you've been in the ring with some people who, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, cl- loud crowds or quiet atmosphere? You, you'll have had experience of both of these. So, which one was your favourite? Loud, loud crowds, absolutely. Uh, quick knockout or strategic win? Um. I think you can appreciate a strategic win more, but for yourself and for your fans' purpose, I think I think a quick knockout is nice too. Cool. AJ or Fury? Fury. Thank you very much. 
Thank you very much. <laughs> so much for joining us on the podcast. I'm not going to say any more about that one. We, we'll leave it there. Mate, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate you coming on again. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up one more time for Sonny Hardy. Hey, I hope you've enjoyed this podcast. Please don't forget to subscribe and like this and follow this on all of the platforms that you're following your podcasts on uh, and keep it locked in for every Tuesday at 12 o'clock. We'll be launching a new podcast. So keep it on the Big Hype Podcast.